What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Planners and Wine. My name is Myra. And my name is Meg. Welcome back, y'all. Yay, welcome back to another week. Um, pretty much halfway through August at this point. Over <laughs> half, <laughs> really. It's like, why does time go by so fast? I feel like the first half of the year kind of just like slowly passes by, and then the second half of the year just flies. Does anybody else feel like that, or is it just me? Yeah, I feel like it it starts to kick in gear like May ish, mm-hmm. April May ish, mm, and then I see. I'm gonna say no. Like, April was long. July. April was long. Yeah, because April and May really go by slow to me. So I'm gonna say like June, July is when it really starts to like go by. Yeah, I. It's just been it's just been wild. We're mm-hmm. we're well into damn near fourth quarter. Yep. When yep. does fourth quarter start? October? Is that October? October. Oh, yeah, so we still got like well, yeah. a little over a, a month, month, like a month yeah. and a half. Yeah, it's but crazy. you know. Mm-hmm. But you know what? The good thing about it being this part of the year is that we are like almost fully into pumpkin spice everything season. You know, Dunkin' already has it. Krispy mm-hmm. Kreme already has it. Um, Starbucks is going to have it. Was it next week? Like the 20th? something like that i can't remember the date. yeah i think it's the end of next week now i gotta uh, mm-hmm. check because i'm pretty sure once this episode drops y'all can go to starbucks but yeah your girl is at duck and faithfully now since no get out we we don't we don't want you because you be trying to play I definitely duncan hop this wagon <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i no it's shame okay. No shame. <laughs> no shame. No shame. Because you're right. Because soon as um, the pumpkin cream cold brew comes out at Starbucks, I'm hopping that wagon with no shame. Yeah, I'm exactly. kind of disappointed Duckett didn't have a cold brew this year. Yeah, I know. Or, you mm. know, the cold foam or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, I did try that nutty pumpkin, which it was okay. Oh, yeah, I was about to ask about that. Okay. Yeah, I just think it needs a little bit right. more sugar. But then again, like, I feel like Duncan, I don't, it depends on the location. Mm-hmm. So maybe if I try a different location and see, but um, yeah, the one I had, it just needed a little bit more sugar. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah I got a iced it. pumpkin spice latte from Dunkin' the other day. Actually, I got two in a row. I got two on like two, one on Tuesday and like one on Wednesday and delicious, perfect, consistent. I'm even like a Dunkin' app girly. I order on the app and then go through the drive through to pick it up. I'm like, a, I'm a real, I'm a real Dunkin' girly. See, I feel like if I get yeah. the app, then I'm truly switching sides. Yeah, so if you I get the app, it's a wrap. Yet. Yeah, because you get points, you can mm-hmm. build up points, and then I love they have like exclusive drinks on the app that you can only get through the app too. That's what that's what got me to get it. So, and mm-hmm. they have an exclusive pumpkin drink. A missed opportunity. Oh, I didn't look. I don't. I'm. You probably. I don't think they do, but I'm not 100 mm-hmm. percent sure because I didn't see anything different on there but yeah um shout out to duncan yeah just, and you know, actually it's happy. two more weeks for starbucks it's on the 29th all right <laughs> all right starbucks, starbucks is really playing the- you might as well say <laughs> september 1st i mean truly why not just have it on september 1st they just wanted to be able to say they had it in august but at the dead end of at august. the dead end dead wow. yeah yeah wow embarrassing Embarrassing, but it's fine because we still gonna yeah. get it the second it's available. Oh, it's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I am hoping and praying that they uh like drop a new fall drink too, because they mm-hmm. haven't done that in years. They just been bringing back the same stuff. So yeah, I'm hoping we see something new. Yeah, I hope we get something new. I definitely want them to bring back the old faithfuls, like the pumpkin mm-hmm. cream cold brew, pumpkin spice latte. Irish cream cold brew, which is one of my like all time favorite drinks. But yeah, give us something new as well. We love that. Yeah, yeah, they can't get mm-hmm. rid of that cold brew. I think the Mm-mm. the the cold brew has overtook in the PSL at this point. Mm-hmm. I one hundred. I get that way more than the PSL. Same, same, same. I and I I don't know why I'm just a cold brew person. Anyway, like I think it's mm-hmm. because of Starbucks because Starbucks is cold brew is just so much better than their iced coffee. Yeah, it just really got me to loving um cold brew. Just period. But y'all know I'm a. I'm a full all year round iced coffee person. So cold brew is my jam or cold coffee person. So cold brew is my jam. Yeah. I 
don't really get the hot coffees until like Christmas time, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, if it was me, I just I don't know why. Like I'll have a hot coffee every now and then, but I'm more likely probably to get like a hot chocolate than a hot coffee. I don't know what it is. I just love cold coffee. Mm. Do you make your own hot chocolate? Uh yeah, sometimes at the house, but also all I drink at the house is cold coffee as well. Like I never like Dallas will make a pot of coffee and I don't drink that. I'm like, ew. <laughs> I never could get a, no. a hot cocoa right at home. I I haven't yeah, mastered I mean, that yet, but yeah. We've made it from like scratch before and that's really good, but we'll also mm. do the, the little quick little packets. Yeah. That are perfect every time. Mason loves those. Yeah. Those still don't do not do it for me. Mm. It's something, it must be something I'm doing, but. Yeah. But yay. So. PSL season, holiday season. Let's go. Love that. Love that for yeah. us. Don't be haters. If you don't like it, it's fine. You don't have to tell anybody. Penny Corn is coming back. I cannot wait to find oh, my God. first bag and harass y'all with it. Like at this point, if y'all don't realize I'm trolling, I just I don't know what to tell you. Like people really yeah. get mad. They really Let get my mad. Live, okay? It's fine <laughs> because y'all don't have to eat the candy corn. That's more for Myra. Everything is right with her. Just like y'all don't have to drink the pumpkin spice drinks. Is more for us. Everything is is all right in the world. And we talked about in our uh, chat, too, about how Wendy's is coming out with a uh, pumpkin spice frosty. Are we going to try that? Are you open to trying that? Yeah. I, yeah. It, anything with pumpkin. I love a good frosty. Yeah. The strawberry one is really good. And mm-hmm. we usually get it mixed mm-hmm. with strawberry chocolate. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I so never good. tried that before. Yeah. So you know, good. at the end of last year, uh, Wendy's was selling this like little pass, which you get like a free mini. You get like as like an unlimited amount of like free mini frosties for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Literally, it costs like three bucks or something like that. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a steal. Of course, I'm gonna get this girl. I'd have been to Wendy's a, a few times this year. I have never gotten one. That's how they made their money. <laughs> they knew we was gonna forget. They knew that's we what was they make it all. Exactly. Or you lose the booklet or whatever. That's what they're banking on. Exactly. Exactly. So that is a I good deal, though. To get, so when I go get my pumpkin spice frosty, I am going to use my little because it's in my car. It's literally right there in my car, and I still forget about it. I need to write a post it note, uh, uh, write on a post it note and leave it in my car. Yeah. They something. ain't giving you no reminders. They see you ordering a frosty. They don't care. And they don't care. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. They do not care. But yeah, guys, um, we just did a whole tangent. I love that for us, though. Y'all get it. <laughs> Let us know when y'all listen to this episode if y'all prefer iced or hot coffee. And also, if you're excited about pumpkin spice season or if you're more like an apple person or if you don't really like fall drinks, um, you know, comment and let us know. Yeah, the apple kind of gets left out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's fall ish too. Yeah. But- you know, it gets forgotten. Also, it that is. that apple macchiato from Starbucks is horrible. It is so freaking mm-hmm. terrible. I hate mm-hmm. it. Hate That's it. why it gets forgotten. Yeah, because the apple <laughs> drinks just don't hit the same. It don't hit the same. Mm-mm. It don't. It's not our fault. We tried. You know, we tried. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? We had at my job. We had like a um, like a like a fall get together last year at my uh, boss's house, and mm-hmm. one of my coworkers, uh, she brought in some like um, some apple cider, and then she had like some caramel vodka. Girl, those mixed together was so <laughs> good. I'm getting that this fall. It was so good. It was just. It was everything. See, like sometime Apple, like that hits. Mm-hmm. Like that sounds like it's it amazing. Hits. But yeah. Yes. I guess it's a hit or miss kind of vibe with Apple. There we go. Yeah. Because most pumpkin stuff, I'm here for. See, I, I see. I trust. I trust Duncan to try to give us some Apple stuff, but they haven't done it yet because Starbucks well, messed up. So maybe they can. Maybe they can try. <laughs> maybe we'll next see. fall. <laughs> we will see. We shall definitely <laughs> see. 
But okay, so one thing I wanted to talk about is kind of like a fun topic. It's like just talking about like first day of school, like rituals, things we get we got excited about as kids because as y'all know, both me and Myra have kindergartners. Mm -hmm. Um, my daughter has already started kindergarten. Myra's uh, son is starting kindergarten very very soon. Um, and I don't know why. Like this time of the year is like. It's so exciting, and I haven't felt this excitement in a long time because obviously it's been forever since I personally had a first day of school. And then when my daughter had a first day of school for like you know daycare or whatever, that really didn't count. So this yeah. is like our real like first first day of school in like a very long time. So mm -hmm. what are do you have any like first day of school rituals or things that you did when you were a kid or like things that you got excited about when when going back to school? In elementary. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, this is how I knew I was an early bird through and through. I would go to bed <laughs> earlier than um, I was supposed to because I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure. Well, I think maybe it was a little bit of my anxiety. I just always feared that I wouldn't wake up in time. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I always went to bed <laughs> earlier, um, mm -hmm. you know, laying out the clothes, having the mm -hmm. perfect outfit, um, always the new stationery. I love organizing like my book bag and stuff before. The yes. Birthday. Yes. And stay that way, but I love doing it for the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. So mm -hmm. yeah, those were my a few of mine that I can remember. I love that. Yeah. yeah, I did all the things too. Like I would lay out my outfit. I would always struggle to get to bed early. That was always wrong. Like I would get in bed <laughs> and I would just be so excited. And even to this day, like the night before anything that's really exciting that's happening for me, mm -hmm. I cannot sleep. I will toss and turn. And so like this year, even before my daughter's first day of school. I was tossing the turn in that night. Like I was like, it was my first day of school. I probably got like four or five hours of sleep that night, even though really? I went to bed at a decent time. Yes. I don't know why. I just have so much like, I don't know if it's excitement, anxiety, a little bit of both, but I could just never sleep the night before something super exciting. But when I was a kid, like I used to wake up super early on the first day of school. I would watch Save by the Bell when I got ready. Like, I don't know why. I just remember watching Save by the Bell on tbs like vividly <laughs> back then and it just made me so happy and i just ah, oh, those were the days those were the days for real i don't remember watching stuff before school mm -hmm. um I, give or take like i don't think i necessarily watched but i remember like pokemon being the one before school mm -hmm. but i don't think i like mm -hmm. actually sat there and watch it but i do vividly remember mm -hmm. and this is gonna be <laughs> age me coming home and watching zoom what's zoom from pbs come on mm. come on i remember watching that oh okay. yeah yeah with the I kids i remember from pbs is arthur i don't remember anything else from pbs except for arthur no zoom girl mm. they be had me making shit i was making mm. um cinnamon toast mm -hmm. and I, I messed up my grandma's <laughs> toaster one time trying to <laughs> the, stuff, the cinnamon and sugar in there and it, it yeah was, it was a whole thing but yeah um i remember I like that. watching arthur and stuff too on there too but i vividly I remember arthur. zoom oh wow okay okay that makes sense that makes I, sense I, yeah I, you that know was what? my jam I only watch Save by the Bell in the morning the first week of school after that i was waking up way too late i was waking up like 20 minutes where I had to leave for school. <laughs> was like that shit by the bell. wore off after like a week. <laughs> okay. I was not saved by the bell. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, um, it's been it's just been so exciting to be able to like experience this again through our kids. And yeah, like even like my night before excitement anxiety it even spills into stuff like go wild and stuff like that like the night before we travel for go wild i will be up all night just laying in bed yeah yeah tossing and turning out of just sheer excitement i don't know why yeah like that's that. where the sleep deprived initially starts right then mm -hmm. there mm-hmm mm-hmm exactly exactly yeah. that's true you just start off not sleeping mm -hmm. and then it never gets better it never gets better until you get home <laughs> then you're like in frank session bawling your eyes out because you haven't yeah. slept in at that yeah. point four days <laughs> in four days and you still not gonna sleep for another no. full day so until you literally get home Ooh. yep and then pass out for like a day literally yeah i'm all, i'm already uh planning out my pto 
for for next year. 100% taking off the Monday after Go Wild because you just need it to recover from traveling. And just like you said, to be able to catch up on sleep and stuff, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. That's that I don't remember too much from uh other than that from like first day of school. I don't know what I, just I was remember doing. Being excited. I just remember being so excited. Yeah. It's just I so excited. I, I, like, did I just not did I just stop caring in high school? I think I stopped caring in high school. <laughs> yeah. Everything I'm talking about is elementary pre, like yeah. ninth grade. Mm-hmm. Like ninth grade, like Middle school and elementary school for sure. Once I got to high school, did I care? Yeah, did I care? <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I cannot even it's fine. remember what I did. I know. I remember I asking know. for like expensive shoes. Mm-hmm. It's the only mm-hmm. thing I remember asking for in high school. Yep. But you know what? It's really nice seeing like our kids be so excited mm-hmm. about school because then you just remember how excited you are when you first start school. And it's like, I know as like the years progress, like, <clears throat> you know, things happen. Some kids kind of start to lose interest in school or whatever the case. And it's just like, my main focus is really trying to help her keep that excitement because mm-hmm. that's how she'll like really you know, do well and just really enjoy it because it's just such a special time in your life and you don't realize until it's over. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's really pumped. He's, you know, even with like, Mm -hmm. you know, we call daycare school, but even with that, he was always super excited to Mm -hmm. go there. He's, he soaks up everything like a sponge, good and bad, but you know, He's good super, and bad. Yeah, he's super ready to go. So I'm excited for him. Just me too. Yeah, it's it's I a it's it. a great time. So by the we time real I'm moms. This, I know we like, real moms. Pickup line moms. Girl, wild. okay. Can we talk about the pickup line? I know you haven't got to experience <laughs> I it yet, and I not. Yet. I don't want to scare you. <laughs> I'm hoping but... because you know okay. his his is a smaller group. Yeah, so I'm hoping it's not as overwhelming that's as true. I've been telling, as I've been that's told. That's true. So yeah, yeah, that's what we it before. might it it might not be. It might not be. Yeah. And honestly, this is one of those things that you just get used to. And I feel mm-hmm. like after the first couple of weeks of school, like you iron out the kinks. I even saw Danny has said on threads that like the first few weeks of school is always just kind of a hot ass mess, and then everybody gets used to it. Everybody starts to understand it or whatever, and it's just way smoother after that. So. That is definitely reassuring. It hasn't been horrible, but on the scale of one to ten, I will put it at probably like a four. So not like average. Yeah. yeah. A little bit below average. <laughs> because I think my biggest pet peeve is so many parents line up so freaking early, especially in the afternoon yeah. for pickup. They are lined up so early. And it's like I've been trying to get there earlier and earlier every day. No, they still there. I'm like, do y'all not work? Do y'all they, just stay they here stay all, there day? all day? <laughs> like, I'm so confused. Why do you are here? <laughs> they stay there all day. That is why. Girl, they literally camp outside the school all day. I'm totally convinced. I am totally, totally convinced. But once it gets moving, it's moving. It's just waiting for it to get moving is what is kind of annoying. But once it gets moving yeah. and the kids start coming out and stuff, then it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because so Ashton starts, they have two separate groups as far as starting. So the first group has already mm-hmm. started school. So um, I've been getting like text messages and emails about, mm-hmm. okay, buses are a little bit delayed. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I, I see what Danny was saying on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Cause it sounds like it's a hot ass mess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, y'all did this before though. Every year. Every year. Every year. <laughs> but I, yeah. yeah, we'll get through it. We'll yes. get through it. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to just. Yeah figure it all out i think the main thing for us that we're really trying to work on is like teaching mason how to like buckle her seatbelt unbuckle her seatbelt which is Mm -hmm. something that she had already knew how to do but it's just kind of refining that and also having to like open and close the door on her own because you know we're in the front seat she's in the back seat like sometimes there's a teacher there to help get her in and out of the car but not all the time because they have other Mm -hmm. kids to help too so just really trying to get her used to to that part of it yeah it's it's interesting yeah 
Ashton has um, mastered that. Perfect. That's yeah, great. I mean, it's that's, perfect that's for one that less thing y'all got to worry about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. great. So I'm like, do you have to chill with the growing up too fast? Like he wants to get in and get out. He can't yeah. get out because I have child lock on, but yeah, he can get in and close. The oh, door. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, yeah, that, like I said, that's definitely been something that we've been working on because of this. Because really, before now, like she just really never had any reason yeah. to be opening the closing mm-hmm. the door, so we just never really did it. And it just really didn't occur to us. And at schools I've worked at in the past, where we were helping, you know, get kids in and out of cars and stuff, we helped them all the time mm-hmm. like consistently but then so how now when there's not always somebody there to help her consistently it's just like all right babe, open the door <laughs> push it open no keep your backpack on okay put your backpack back on <laughs> it's a, yeah it's a whole thing it's, it's a whole, whole thing. thing yeah i still get nervous yeah. like be careful because I, I don't want Girl. you to smash or get stuck in the door like i yeah but Per- raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by a car door as a child and smashed your finger into a car door. I definitely know I have, and I don't mm-hmm. want Mason to experience that trauma because <laughs> it yeah. is traumatic. It is very traumatic. It is not a good <sighs> feeling at all. But yeah, mm-hmm. he's been doing good with it. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Don't have mm-hmm. to, you know, worry about that. But we shall see. There, there we go. We shall see. But yeah, y'all, let us know if y'all have kiddos starting school or, you know, if y'all have some fun memories of back to school, mm-hmm. definitely chime in on the conversation and let us know. It's just such a fun time. I love the fall so much. Even though it's not officially fall, I just love, love, love the fall. Yeah, I, I'm super excited for both of them. They are going to mm-hmm. have a really good school year this year. I think so. Yep. I definitely, definitely think so. Like Mason has still been excited every day to go. Like every day she'll ask me, what am I doing tomorrow? And I'm like going back to school and she's like, oh my God. I'm like, keep that same energy, chick, all year. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Don't lose that. Don't lose that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we shall see with Ashton. He has been getting up at the right time to like, start getting ready. Like, perfect. you know, so that mm-hmm. won't be an adjustment, but we'll see. Yep. Maybe we'll he'll see. get over it. Yeah. Yeah. He'll get over it. He'll yeah. get over it. Um, but yeah, so we did have a big fall release. I mean, we're just talking about fall everything today. I love that mm-hmm. for us. So Archer and Olive released their fall 2023 collection. It is available to shop as we speak and it is really really gorgeous they have lots of beautiful notebooks the notebook colors are like deep like jewel tone type mm-hmm. of colors like reds and blues and greens um they have vegan leather covers they have a cover with pumpkin on it a wolf on it coffee it's just it's very beautiful and i like i said i think i said this before but i love how now like arch and olive will have like all these different like um theme of notebooks available in every single size so you can get every single notebook in a5 a6 b5 b6 a by a and travelers which is amazing yeah i really love this um vegan leather like embossed Mm -hmm. yes it's so cool and the subtle like archer and olive logo in the middle Mm -hmm. that's so dope but yeah i love that they come in every different colors in the box yep I love the box. I the boxes. The, so cute. That um, journal notebook mm-hmm. sold out. Oh, which one? Was it the uh, the heirloom collection one? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I was just about to, yeah, I was just looking at that on here. Oh, that is really beautiful. It's like kind of like a, it's a letter size with a choice of dot grid, lined, or sketchbook. Very cool. Now, is it turned on this side? It looks like it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's horizontal. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but y'all bought that up. Y'all said, I want that. So I'm hoping, yeah, um, they they bring it back. Yeah, they'll they'll definitely bring it back. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested in seeing, like, if they're going to, like, switch up the covers or what. Yes. Yeah, it does. It looks really cool. It looks, it does look really, really cool. And you could have got it it in line, dot grid, or blank. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Yeah. yeah. And they have some new. Yeah, I didn't get one. <laughs> my red included because I don't think yeah <laughs> I know I needed it apparently right. I needed it <laughs> we needed it we needed it 
Uh, they have uh, two new sets of Kiliograph and Acrylograph pens, one in the color palette of Autumn Morning and the other in the color pa palette of Autumn Midnight. Ooh. Y'all, I just love everything. It's, yeah. Fall. It's giving. It's giving. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. love the Auto Midnight though. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. It's really good. It's yes. really good. And I'm glad they're like um the way that they come in now. Instead of that like big package that they used to come in, they're more mm -hmm. sleek and smaller. I I love it. But yeah. Nice. Yeah. Super cool. They also have a uh, fine tip writing pen. It is a 0.5 millimeter tip with black gel ink. Y'all know we love black gel ink. And this mm -hmm. is just like a really pretty pen. They have um, stamp sets, uh, coffee and book stamp set, have some new washi tapes. And I hope y'all not sleeping on the arch and all the washi tapes because these washi tapes are extremely cute. Like I was so impressed yeah. with the ones they had earlier in the summer. Mm -hmm. It was like the um like the road trip thing, like the old motel thing. Yes, Those are so that's gorgeous. So good. And these are really, really, really good too. I think I might need Ooh, to that it. books and coffee set. Of course it sold out. Of the book and coffee sold set out. is sold out. Yes, I'm so <laughs> sick. I literally pressed add to cart. And it said, and they no, said nope. It literally you said ready. Yep, that's literally what it said, y'all. Literally, the, the red writing at all. I'm yeah. about to email Bunny. Like, I know y'all got a couple extra. misfits. Yeah, please. Like, <laughs> that is so pretty. Oh, that is is so gorgeous. Yeah, I know I'm a cat person in another life, and it has <laughs> not in cat on there life. in another life, not this life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of them. Damn, that's so cute. It's, it's so good. Y'all, it it's just came so out good. two days ago. Why Why y'all didn't save none for us? I'm really upset. They said y'all <laughs> told us to stay ready, and we were. So what we was y'all doing? Our own advice. Yeah. We did not <laughs> take our own advice. Even the, like, coffee Damn. books, coffee and book stickers are sold out. I'm not looking at this no more. All right, we about to move on because I'm mad now, Bonnie. You y'all know we love fall. They I probably know. was like, "Let me let's lay it on them light." We only gonna get so many, but we Dang. love fall. We do love fall. Also, this other washi said the enchanting wolf washi tape is very very pretty. It has like moons and stars and stuff and gold yeah, that foil. Is cute. I yeah. love 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 that set too. Is it sold out too? Let me see. No, it's not sold out. Oh, it's not sold out. But I really need that coffee and watch that coffee and books one. Like for real. And we in our coffee era. I mean, not our coffee and era. Our book era. era. Yeah, book, our book we're era. In our coffee and our books era. You know, we. There needs to be a books and iced coffee one. Like every time yeah. you do like a book and coffee one, it's always the hot coffee. It's always hot coffee. That's true. Yeah. Because hot coffee just looks so aesthetic. It does look I aesthetic. Can, I can yeah. get that. I can, yeah. I, I'm okay with that because I will use that watch the tape while drinking my iced coffee. It's not a big deal. Period. You know, but Period. Yeah. I would love that too. Damn, I'm dead. I'm sad now. Okay, y'all, we about to end the show because I'm devastated. <laughs> devastated. <laughs> I'm genuinely upset. <laughs> I do like this little um, what is this called? The vegan leather covers. Uh huh. I don't uh -huh. know what it is about this. Um, I don't even know what color this is, but they're um, the little bags and stuff that they had before is in the same color. Yeah, I really like yeah, that color. yeah. That is cute. And then this one has this little like a uh, book charm on it. Mm hmm. I really love that. I really. And now they have the new gray zipper pouch that is very cute yeah so cute yeah y'all um oh they even got a mug <gasps> wow this mug it has like a floral design on the inside and the outside oh, i didn't see the mug it's like all the way at the bottom like right before you get to the printable tabs printable tabs oh cute yeah y'all if y'all are on our patreon this is usually this is this is usually a big portion of our like Facebook lives or bonus mm -hmm. episodes where we're literally just shopping. Like I ain't even mean to shop right now. I thought I was just gonna tell y'all about this, but I, this is the first time I've really looked at this collection. I'm like, damn, I really, I really missed out. I feel away. <laughs> I need that watchy thing. I'm gonna check on Makari. 
Girl, don't no, be out there reselling we, stuff. Uh uh-uh, uh. We, yeah. Because you know they're going to put an extra uh, convenience tax on it. I paid $5 extra, okay? Nothing le- nothing more. Don't be trying to triple it. Okay? Oh, That's not right. This soon. <laughs> I am thinking about copping this uh, vegan leather cover because it, it's sleek. I love the way that the book fits in there. <gasps> So good. Uh, and it has a pocket. Yeah, that's really nice. Is that an A5 inside of it? Yeah, um, it's A5 the and B5, B5 notebooks. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's really, really nice. It's giving professional. It's giving professional. And you get to protect your cover. Because sometimes, like, my design, especially if it's a vegan leather cover, my embossed mm-hmm. design starts to fade a little bit. The mm-hmm. more and more I use it, but um, if it's in this, it'll be protected. Yeah, I can't look no more. I'm devastated about this washi tape. It is so cute, girl. <laughs> not the the washi tape. The other stuff that has been sold out. What else is sold out? The journal. Oh, really? Yeah the the um the one that came in the different um the Harlem. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that is sold out too. But, but really, you don't care. Really you got the washi. washi. <laughs> I really need this washi. I really need this it's washi. So it's so good. It's so good. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm sad, but I'm fine. Anyway, on to happier, less devastating things. <laughs> um, the Go Wild presale is officially on. Emails came out as me and I are recording this. So if mm-hmm. you have attended any Go Wild ever, you are eligible to purchase a pre-sale ticket, or if you are a member of Wild University, uh, either monthly or yearly, doesn't matter. You are eligible to purchase a pre-sale ticket. Pre-sale tickets are no different than the regular sale tickets. They are just fifty dollars cheaper, you know, just for the people who've gone before, or like I said, the people who are members of Wild University. So, and we got ours. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to mm-hmm. get there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. I'm really excited for the mm-hmm. hotel. Oh, um, me too. Excited to not have to do sightseeing. Well, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds ridiculous, but I'm, I am. I am. I'm yeah. in Dallas. Food is amazing. So yes, really excited for the food. So yeah. good, so good. And also, guys, um, we had Lauren Wang on our episode of our Patreon exclusive show, Shots, that you can mm-hmm. check out if you join our Patreon. And she gave us a really, really great behind the scenes, like look and chat about Go Wild, the things that they, you know, go into planning Go Wild, the history of Go Wild, all those great stuff. So if you want more information, definitely check that out if you're on our Patreon. If you're not on our Patreon, it's never too late to join, and you get instant access to all of our past amazing um, bonus content, including several episodes of Shots. And shout out to Lauren, because, man, if I wasn't already sold on that hotel, she definitely very much sold me on that hotel. It's going to be very nice. Food places, very convenient to it on on-site. Um, so I'm ready. I am ready. Yeah. I mean, we, we tell you. We tell you all the time. We get the yeah. tea. If you are curious and want to know, Mm -hmm. that episode alone is going to give you everything you need. Mm -hmm. Yep. It gave us everything we needed. As if we needed more, but you know. We didn't. But (laughs) But we got it. (laughs) We got it. We got it. But yeah, I'm so excited. We did go ahead and book our hotel because once you get your ticket, Mm -hmm. um, the confirmation email gives you the link to the room block and everything um, at the Lowe's in Arlington. And yeah, we're ready. Which shout out to you for doing that because I straight just got my ticket and moved on. (laughs) I know where I was going to be sleeping. I was just like, I just need to get this ticket. (laughs) <laughs> Myra just just unbothered queen just unbothered she's like it's fine we'll we'll figure that we'll out, figure it out. Later. Yeah. it's no big deal and just fyi in case anybody's curious um the rooms are 219 a night and you don't have to pay anything to book at all you just put a credit card or whatever just to um you know to book it but they don't nice. charge you anything until you're actually at the hotel so that's even better yeah so that's you don't have to worry better. about yeah. that yeah, because mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, you have to put like the first night deposit and, you know, mm-hmm. we like to know what we're getting into. So, yes, 
exactly exactly so yeah i am so excited and we did talk about we're definitely probably gonna go in time to be able to experience shop summit which i'm really excited about we've always heard good things about shop summit mm-hmm. and i definitely think shop summit is something that gets better every single year for sure so we're definitely gonna go and check that out and just be spectators and try to soak up some great information about you know being a small business from like other you know business owners i'm really excited about shop summit yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about it too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there were some amazing speakers last time. We weren't able to mm-hmm. uh, attend, but I really want, and that's another reason why I'm like, I don't want to. I'm happy that we don't have to do like sightseeing or you know, events yeah. or whatever before because I can you know devote my focus and attend this. It's I think it's a great thing for not just shop owners. If you're a creator, if yes. you're just curious, you know, mm-hmm. to know more about the businesses within this mm-hmm. community. I, I think it's perfect and, you know, totally worth uh, tacking on if you can. Yes, same, 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 same. So, yeah, guys, let us know if y'all have gotten your um, Go Wild 2024 ticket or if you plan on getting it later. Also, if y'all have any questions, like, you know, we're not experts. We've only been um, twice, so we're not, like, OGs. But we know a little some some, and we can we can help you a little bit. And if we can't, we will direct you to somebody who can so that's and that's the beauty, <laughs> <In my Yeah. life. laughs> that's the beauty. if we don't know the answer we yep. probably know somebody who do know it but yeah 100 definitely we do but yeah guys uh we're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back <music> all right y'all so we are back Whew, we have a lot to, to talk about in this second half of the show. We're going to try to not to talk y'all ear off and get through this quickly, but it's been some really interesting things going on this week. Obviously, we can't cover everything, but we're mm-hmm. definitely going to cover everything that we can. And, you know, we just tried to pick out the most pertinent stuff. So first thing I want to talk about is... Michael Orr, he was the subject of the movie The Blind Side. It was his life story. Um, He is suing his family, in quotations, the family who was involved um, in the, in, you know, in the movie and everything with him for, I mean, there's a lot of things uh, in this complaint, but the main thing is the way that the family was able to profit off of, you know, this movie, his life story and how he was left out of those profits. Also, he was under a conservatorship with his family that he signed um, up for unknowingly when he was 18 years old. You know, y'all are familiar with conservatorships because of Britney Spears. Um, And he thought that this conservatorship was making him a legal family member of this family um, and that they were legally adopting him which apparently never took place. And according to him, he just found that out earlier this year that not only did they make, you know, millions of dollars off of this story that turned into a movie about his life, but they didn't even, you know, adopt him. He's not even officially a part of their family. Girl, when this came out, TikTok went crazy. TikTok went crazy because I feel like most of us, and when I say us, I mean black people. Most of us kind of got the ick from the Blind Side movie anyway, because yeah, it was definitely giving always given, yeah, yeah. It's given white savior. And we always felt a way about that, even though I love Sandra Bullock. She was the star of that movie, but still, like the storyline was just her fault. And yeah. yeah, and that's another thing Michael Orr said that he hate he always hated that movie because it portrayed him as like an idiot for one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And two, it out. It also made it seem like this woman in this family introduced him to football when apparently he was like a football star before they. Yeah, met before him. they met. Yeah. So, what was your reaction when you saw this, all this that came out? I mean, I was gagged, but also like not really surprised either. Unfortunately, um, you know, mm-hmm. this tale is as old as time, mm-hmm. but it. <sighs> It's just, it's just so wild. It's so wild. I didn't realize that he was never adopted either. Mm-hmm. And the movie had some being adopted by them, yeah. I believe. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he thought he was adopted this whole time too. I know, which is so wild. So, so wild. I yeah, just, it's definitely uh, not. 
it's not the first time that you know we've heard a story about a a black person being exploited unfortunately Mm -hmm. (laughs) by white people it definitely happens um a lot it has happened a lot you know obviously through the history of this country and stuff um but this was that i think this is especially bad because of the movie and everything like that like um yeah and they've come out you know then said that that's not true they didn't make all this money off the movie the only reason they did the conservatorship was because he was too old to adopt because he was 18 and xyz having all these reasons and all these excuses for everything saying that he has tried to like shake them down and get money from them several times over the past few years telling them that if they didn't give him money that he was going to expose them and all this type of stuff and my my counter to that is like okay yeah he would try to shake y'all down if he felt like y'all owed him money because y'all made millions off of this movie Mm -hmm. um and he he made nothing off of this movie i mean he even said this movie had a negative impact on his career because people looked at him as an idiot you know so i don't know i just feel like based on his his statement and based on their statement there's only two possibilities either this is some type of you know huge misunderstanding mm-hmm. it primarily on their part because they haven't been very you know upfront about a lot of things with him or it's exactly what he said it is and they exploited him um for millions of dollars and profited off his life story and he didn't so either way either either with either one of those situations i don't see him at fault like i don't think that he has just arbitrarily been trying to get money from them i think there's a reason for it you know what i'm saying yeah i um if Mm -hmm. it walks like a duck that's that's what i'm getting yeah, and it quacks like a duck because that's what it sounded like. like. Mm-hmm. Why and what universe would you tell this man that he's adopted, and then now you have a whole different story about what happened? I know. How do you clarify I know. that? It's How so does weird. That happen? His, I mean, honestly, his story just makes more sense than this yeah. does. Absolutely. Because my thing is, if he been trying to shake y'all down for years to get money from y'all, why weren't y'all suing him? Why weren't y'all saying anything about it publicly? Because you knew what it was. Mm-hmm. You knew what it was. And right. they're trying to make it seem like he's, you know, out to get him. Mm-hmm. Which also, a lot of people are probably going to believe because, yeah. you know, big, scary black man. Right. Right. You know? Yep. And also, this is not the first, like, white savior situation that this uh, woman, I think her name is, like, Leanne Tui or something like that. I know her last name is mm-hmm. Tui. I think her first name is Leanne, but um, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, a few years ago, there was, well, maybe, maybe about, I think it was, like, in 2014 or something, there was a situation. Where Steve made it. Did you see this Instagram post? Do you know what I'm talking about? What's the name again so I can try and pull it up? I don't know. I think her name is not, it's probably not on her page anymore. I saw this oh. floating around on TikTok. So I'm going to try to find okay. a TikTok and send it to you. Okay. But long story short, she owns, their family owns like a lot of like uh, fast food franchises, I believe, like maybe McDonald's or something like that. And she put up an Instagram post where it was a picture of her and two like black teenagers, black male teenagers um, inside of one of her franchises. And the caption was like, these two kids were in my restaurant and, you know, somebody told me that they thought that they was up to no good. And so I approached them and sat down with them and asked them what they were up to. And that's when they told me that they didn't have, they were trying to get money together to go to a basketball game and that they didn't have bus fare and all this stuff. And, and then she was like, but that's just, that, that situation really taught me that you can never judge a book by its cover. And they left with food and with bus fare and it just, you know, happy, happy fairy tale situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Then one of the boys in the picture commented on the Instagram post and was like, first of all, she didn't tell us why she was taking this picture. Um, She just asked us to take a picture with us. She didn't tell us that somebody told her, asked her, were we up to no good in the store? And that's why she approached us. We never said we didn't have money for the game. I had money for the game. And my friend was trying to wait for his uncle to send him some money. So we weren't trying to figure it out like we had it figured out and we never said anything about riding the bus and I don't know why that was an assumption of hers (sighs) 
<laughs> what that a piece like, of shit. Isn't that crazy? That is why. So she took down the post, obviously. I'm sure the post is not there. I am I am sure <laughs> Can the you post imagine? is not there. Like, how did the conversation go? Like, okay, two random black boys. Can I take a picture with you? Exactly. I don't even know exactly. She just totally misrepresented that whole thing to make herself again look like a white savior. So you're telling me that that's not exactly what she did with this Michael Orr situation when she did it on Instagram? Like, and she's probably done it several other times that we just don't even know about. Like, who knows? Like, this is clearly a thing with this lady. And I bet who was in the comments praising her. You already know. This you is stuff we be talking really about. No. Y'all see, you know, white woman and just automatically believe everything that she says. And just run with it. Yeah. And just run with it with no vetting. Because obviously the post by itself was mad problematic. But the fact that yeah. one of the kids came on the post and really clarified the whole situation and how she had just misrepresented it so badly to make herself look because I mean she's a business owner she could have posted that same picture and she said hanging out with some great customers she could have just said she didn't have to do all and probably would have had the same result the same 10 likes girl <laughs> you know <laughs> like be for real be for real that's again, embarrassing that's name. <laughs> I hope he takes down for every single cent <laughs> Because it was unnecessary, so, first so of wild. all. And second of all, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Like, she you, she literally used her privilege for mm -hmm. her own self-gain, even if it was yep. just for gloating. It, yep. Yeah, because, I mean, it, hell, at least with the Michael situation, she had money to gain. With this situation with those boys in her uh, restaurant, she didn't have anything to gain except for clout. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Clout and, and praise from other white people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you make it so these poor, you know, mm -hmm. poor black boys. Yep. You came just and totally saved them. just mischaracterized them just for no just for shits and giggles, basically. So yeah, I don't believe them. Uh I <laughs> <Clearly>. believe Michael. <laughs> I believe Michael, and I'm gonna just leave it at that. One quick thing I wanted to touch on: people are calling because obviously people are very angry about this. People mm -hmm. are calling for Sandra Bullock to give back her Oscar for because she won an Not Oscar for this role. And yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't mm -hmm. think she should have to give back her award. I do think the producers and the people who cashed in $300 million from that movie needs to make sure that Michael gets something. Like the fact that they didn't and they didn't negotiate with him at all even though he was an adult at the time they just clearly did all their negotiations with that family that was very wrong they yeah. they are the people who need to be held accountable um you know sandy she just played her part <laughs> and she yeah, did her job. it and she killed it yeah but yeah. um yeah those people they, they need to make sure that michael is uh compensated like there's nobody should be able to make three hundred million dollars off of your life story, and you don't got a dime to show for it. Yeah, off of the, uh, off of a twenty nine million dollar budget. Yeah, that's wild. Be for yeah. real. And the whole movie is like portrayed in her eyes too. Like it, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, we always had the ick about the movie. We did. Mm hmm. Yep. Anyway. Run his run his coin. Get get Michael his money. Period. Expeditiously. <laughs> With interest. With interest. Literally, because it's been a while. Like, don't play. Um, also, a new reality show is coming. Uh, Y'all, I do not know what network this show is going to be on. Um, I'm going to have to look it up, but it's going to be called House of Villains. It's coming out October the 12th. Uh, and the only cast member y'all really need to know and care about is New York, uh, Tiffany, Tiffany New York Pollard. Pollard. That's is going to be in I it, and that's why I'm going to be tuning in because you know y'all know we love New York over here. That was the perfect name for this show. <laughs> it literally is a perfect name of the show, and if I can find it somewhere, I'm about to rewatch it because classic mm -hmm. reality classic television. TV. Okay, it's coming to E. It's coming to E. It's E's new competition series. Also, we're gonna have Tanisha Thomas from the Bad Girls Club. Y'all <laughs> don't remember Tanisha. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I didn't get no sleep because of y'all. Y'all ain't y'all get no sleep because of me. me with the pots and pans. Soundtrack of my life. Soundtrack okay. of my life lives re- free in my head. She is a chaos queen. Mm-hmm. She is a chaos queen. So this is going to be a... Okay, this is what shadowandact.com said about it. They said, hailing from some of the most popular reality TV franchises, these notorious villains meet their match as they must outsmart, outmanipulate, and outscheme each other through a series of challenges in order to win a $200,000 cash prize and the title of America's ultimate supervillain. I need New York to win this. New York is the only logical winner. Is that our homie from Mm -hmm. Love is Blind on here too? It shake shake from love is blind. <laughs> shake. How can we not yes. watch this? It's like the multiverse of madness. It's really all these people <laughs> who don't have nothing to do with each other. Okay, we're also gonna have Johnny Bananas. If y'all watch his MTV's The Challenge, he is definitely a villain. Um, mm-hmm. Korean Olympias, she was on Nick Vial season of The Bachelor. She's definitely a villain. Omarosa. I know y'all know who Al Russ is. Yeah. She is definitely a villain. Um, Jax Taylor from Vanderpump Rules. Um, and then a couple other people who I really don't know who those people are. But all y'all need yeah. to worry about is New York. And we are rooting for New York with Tanisha. And How did Bobby Lights get on here? He from okay, Love Hip Hop Miami. Oh, okay, okay. I thought his name sounded familiar, but I couldn't place him. It's like mm. they needed to hit a gay quota. Well, that's okay. I, I think mean, he's gonna be entertaining with that. I would hope they would cast him. I mean, he's gonna be fun. Maybe he's yeah, fun. like not because you just need representation, but whatever. We'll see. Mm-hmm. You know how they do. Yeah, design, but I am so excited to have New York on my television again. And Johnny Bennett, Johnny is the main one that I don't trust around my girl New York, and he better not try to play her. Which one is Johnny, Johnny in this picture? Johnny is. He's in the very middle, doing like this. Oh, the sh- if you're looking the same picture I am, yeah. Okay, yeah. So a little backstory on Johnny Bananas. He has been on MTV's The Challenge. Uh, I think basically since it started or whatever, mm-hmm. um, very very early on. And Johnny really became a villain because there was once there was one season where they were um, working the teams, and he was in a team with his girl named Sarah. And the crazy thing about this season is when you got to the end, if you were the winning team, you could choose to keep all the money for yourself or to split the money with your partner, depending on which one of y'all came in first and second place. Johnny chose to keep all the money for himself, even though he literally would not have gotten there without Sarah. It was, it was the most heartbreaking moment in television. Like she just cried. Like it was so he did it for no reason. Sarah had never did anything wrong to him and he could not have made it without her. And he played her and took all that money. Yeah. I don't like him. (laughs) New York need to chew, chew him out. All Get the him way out, out. Here. Get him out of here, New York, please. <laughs> oh, it was this horrible. Sounds like it's going to be infuriating, but so, yes. so good. It's going to be fun. This oh. is going to be a fun show. So, yeah, guys, it's coming out on October 12th on E. So, make sure y'all tune in with us because this is going to be, I mean, anything with New York on it. Period. You know, but having New York, Tanisha, Omarosa, like, come on. This is, this is wild. If Shake says something problematic to New York, I forgot about Shake already. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling up on them. <laughs> we got to. Ladies, just get Shake and Johnny out um, immediately. Like, if there's some type of elimination, they got to be the first two to go. Please. Please and thank you. I mean, all these people besides Bobby looks like villains. I don't know. Like, because maybe in other people's eyes, Bobby is a villain. But, like, mm-hmm. with the seasons that I watched, like, I was I was agreeing with him. That's not, like, a villain. I mean, re- but, you know. You are, you are a resident Slytherin. So well, it is a snake uh, on this Your opinion so is here tainted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true, because I agree with New York a few times, too. Girl, do you... <laughs> I love New York. I love New York. I'm sorry. Yeah, period. I love her. I love her. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so fun. So, y'all, Bama Rush Talk has been going on all week. Um, by the time y'all hear this, it's going to have come to an end. We're going to know 
everybody who got cut, all the houses that the girls are into, all those things. But Bama Rush Talk has been very interesting this year. Some people have like thousand dollar wardrobe, you know, thousands of dollars worth of jewelry and stuff at so 18 wild. years old. Yeah. Like it's been very, very wild. Have you been tuning into Bama Rush Talk at all, Myra? Have you seen it? Girl, no, I just be living through the stuff y'all be sending. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, because the one y'all see me when the girl was like casually like naming out stuff and she legit was wearing like three thousand dollars worth of clothing and it looked girl. like she was about to just go play tennis or something like it wasn't casual that spectacular. yeah also i mean do people not know it's like 2023 and the po- the folks is out here robbing like there's just no way you should be on the internet flaunting your jewelry under any circumstance, I, I definitely feel like I, I get the whole outfit of the day thing, but that felt a little bit reckless, especially when, like you said, there are pages that are breaking down those outfits and letting everybody know how much this stuff costs. Like one of the girls had on like a five thousand dollar watch or something like that. It's like, yeah. girl, I know they be robbing in, in Alabama. You need to get yeah, everybody man. desperate somewhere, girl. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, exactly. You know, it, it just may be something that's just dumb that they're doing right it's, now. It's just in another, yeah, they just in another world. <laughs> they are in another world. But one thing that's been really cool that I've been seeing a lot of that has actually been my favorite part of being on Bama Rush Talk is I'm also on Dorm Room Talk. And man, mm. these kids' dorm rooms are so, they're good. They are like goals for real. Like I'm jealous because my my dorm rooms could just absolutely never like my, everything in my dorm room was from Target and Walmart, 100. percent And I'll have no shame in that. But I just Girl, uh, they would have laughed me off of TikTok if I would have put my room <laughs> on there. Like it ain't no way. It, it would not have stood the test of time. Mm-mm. Yeah, everything I had was from Walmart. Oh, and um, I may had a few things for Bed Bath and Beyond. But I had mm-hmm. to beg for that because mm-hmm. that yeah. was expensive. Yes, it was. Okay. And I mean, everybody has these like those like LED signs with like their name, like those customized signs that cost at least $100. Everybody has those. Oh, you those. being generous. Mm-hmm. At least, right, I am. Because you're right. <laughs> the bigger ones are probably more than that. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody got couches Um, in the dorm room. It's nice. It's been very, very nice. It's been a... It's been giving me all my my nostalgia college vibes, even though I could just never. Yeah, couldn't be so me cute. either. Could I mean, me. it's telling me that we need to start saving for our kids' dorm rooms right now. Like, I know we already saving for college, but no, we need to be saving for the dorm, the dorm setup specifically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm I'm just not spending like I priced out a, a LED light thing mm-hmm. for my office. It's like mm-hmm. three fifty. I'm just not oh spending that for you to have your name on your wall. I know, and then it's both usually because it'll be like two girls in a room. It usually is both girls with them. Like it's mm-hmm. like they they parents that coordinated all this. I mean, so, I guess I, more mm-hmm. power to them. Ooh, more power. Have to them. you seen guys but, have those too? Because maybe I can luck out but be a boy. Yeah, you know what? I've seen a couple of the guy dorm rooms that I have not seen though. So this is when being a boy mom might definitely benefit you. But theirs have been opulent too. Theirs have been really nice too. So yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm not ready. Plus inflation, Mm -hmm. not ready, girl. At least we got some time. We got like like fifteen, thirteen years. We got like thirteen years, so we can get ourselves together by then, hopefully. Mm-hmm. hopefully yep hopefully <laughs> but yeah there was there is one girl um her name i think her name might be like bama morgan or something like that on tiktok but she is absolutely precious everybody is totally in love with her because her first tiktok that she put up about rush was talking about just relatable rush and she talked about you know her room and stuff from target and you know her normal clothes or her normal jewelry from amazon and sheen and things like that and everybody is standing morgan she got like over 100k um followers on tiktok because she's just been 
just so cute and just so relatable. And, you know, she just seems sweet, very sweet, very down to earth. Like, she put up one video where she was talking about how she doesn't really have, like, a fancy, like, rush bag like some of the other girls do. And her mom, like, like personalized a rush bag for her and sent her, like, this rush um, advent calendar for her to open up one gift every day because she saw somebody else doing it. And she was, like, in tears crying. She was so, It was so cute. It was so cute. I'm emotionally invested in Morgan, okay? If you can't feel. <laughs> Girl, I hope Morgan don't blindside you. <laughs> she better Speaking not. Of blind sides. Speaking of blindsides. <laughs> Morgan is the cutest, though. You'll have to look her up. She just really seems, like, very sweet and humble. Like, a lot of, like, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation about the type of people these girls are and yeah. I don't feel like you know just because they have rich parents or whatever some of them doesn't mean that they're a bad person or anything like that they're just extremely privileged and some of right. them are not you know some of all of them are not extremely privileged you know so it's a, it's been nice to see all the TikTok aunties be very very supportive of, of these girls and, and have our favorites that we're really rooting for and stuff it's been really cute <laughs> I can't believe yeah. this is the thing. Can you imagine, like, no, no, this being a thing while you are in college? I mean, you imagine getting a hundred k TikTok followers in a week because you're making videos about Alabama Rush. Wow, blown, yeah, so wow. But yeah. yeah, like I said, I've seen a lot of overwhelming support for most of these girls. And I hope mm -hmm. it, you know, I hope it stays positive for them. You obviously, you know, the internet is w weird and can be really dangerous yeah. and scary sometimes. Um, but, you know, the TikTok aunties have been really coming through and supporting them. So it's been really cute. I'm a TikTok yeah, auntie. Good. Oh, my God. I'm Are you? An auntie. Yeah, I'm a TikTok auntie. I mean, it's like self proclaimed. Oh, <laughs> nobody gave me the title. I'm like, do you get at a certain age or like, how does this no, work? No, it's just, I, I guess, experience. Am I, are we auntie age? <laughs> I did so. you see that uh, video from uh, Jackie Ina? And she was like, I don't want to be called auntie. I don't want people to call me auntie. Why? She's like, she's never, she's always been called auntie. And I'm like, well, okay. yeah, that's true. She's like, even in my 20s, when I should be, you know, mm -hmm. have something, somebody up to look up to and call auntie, like, y'all yeah, were yeah. calling me auntie. I'm like, well, she only I like mean, 36. I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. And I think you need to be a certain age, but I mean, if you don't want to be called an auntie, I get that. I think yeah. for like Bama Rush, a lot of us have like coined ourselves as aunties because comparatively to these 18 year olds, like some of us are old enough to be their mama. Yeah, <laughs> no, so this is auntie territory, <laughs> and we just feel protective of them like aunties, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, I totally understand that she would doesn't want to be called an auntie, and here I am. I would love to be called an auntie, like, let my brothers know I really want a niece or a nephew, and they've really been playing around with my life, <laughs> and I feel away. Yeah, see, I guess <laughs> like, with I had to situation, it was put on her versus like, yes. you like, I she didn't claim it, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. That totally makes sense, yeah. that totally makes sense. Uh, okay, last thing I want to touch on um, before we wrap up the show is that uh, some of y'all mommy influencers out here about to be getting sued by your kids. And I'm not mad at it. Uh, Illinois is the first state to pass a bill that will allow the um, the child labor laws that will allow teenagers over the age of 18 to take legal action against their parents if they were featured in monetized social media videos and not properly compensated, similar to the rights held by child actors. That is from CNN. Run, run your kids their money, okay? Michael, Michael's uh, so-called adopted parents, this so law is for y'all, okay? <laughs> But oh yeah, I, yeah, I'm I think so this is great. This. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you know it always takes bad things happening in order for the laws to catch up mm -hmm. with you know social media and technology and stuff. And obviously, like those child labor laws were put in place because of child kids being exploited. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so this is another thing: kids have been exploited a lot on social media over the past twenty years. And hopefully, this will be the first step. In a lot of states, making a similar law, maybe even a federal law, coming into place at one at some point to protect these kids and to make sure they are actually able to 
get something out of their lives being on the internet, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I mean, this is a good sign, like, cause you know, obviously we didn't get the like child labor laws when it came to acting until like horrible stuff mm-hmm. started to happen. But obviously yep. back then, like it wasn't, you know, like the law was like slow, but mm-hmm. close enough in the race. But like the way internet works and the way social media works, like it just changes so drastically, like overnight. Yep. And, you know, mm-hmm. the law can't catch up with it. So I'm so happy to see that something is starting to happen. Usually most states yes. see a decision um, and follow with that. Cause it's just, mm-hmm. it's out of control. It, it's really, really out of control. Like when you think about it, like if you are a blogger and you're blogging mm-hmm. your kids all day, technically they are working. They don't have mm-hmm. certain like hours of breaks and people say like, oh, I asked my kid, you know, for permission or whatever. Like a four-year-old cannot. Cause they don't understand something like this. Yeah. No. And then by the time they get to the age where they can, quote unquote, make a good decision, you know, 15, 16, 17, Mm -hmm. they're probably already over you. And you can't really, quote unquote, make money off of them because nobody wants to see, you know, teenagers. They want to see the cute little kids. So, you know, it just has to be done. It's unfortunate that, like, the kids got to grow up and possibly go through the trauma of being Mm -hmm. this vlogging star without seeing any money from it, then try to sue. But maybe it will, you know, deter some people or something. I I still think it needs to be a bit stricter, but it is a step in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And so what the law, because I was, you know, in case anybody is curious about the specific parameters, like, no, you know, you can post a picture of your child on social media and not feel like you have to set aside $50 for them or whatever. It's not that deep. But it does state that. Starting July 1st, 2024, parents in Illinois will be required to put aside 50% of earnings for a piece of content into a block trust fund for the child based on the percentage of time they're featured in the video. For example, if a child is in 50% of a video, they should receive 25% of the funds. If they're in 100% of the video, they're required to get 50% of the funds. However, this only applies in scenarios during which the child appears on the screen for more than 30% of the vlogs in a 12-month period so if you show your kid every now and then in a vlog or something like that um it doesn't seem like it's but i feel like it's a, it could be a very slippery slope and you should just err on the side of putting some of this money aside for your kid why not mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like it you you really should just do that anyway because if they're involved in it um they should be able to get something out of it, especially since they're not able to consent to doing it yeah. Um, you should have to put some money aside for them. Like all that money shouldn't just be family money. Like it should be specifically put aside for them because they're. And I know this is specifically targeting these vlog families who just had based all their content off of their kids. That's why I'm really shocked that it wasn't like a California or a New York that yeah. had this law first because that's primarily, especially California, I think that's primarily mm-hmm. where a lot of these families live because um, a lot of them, you know, end up relocating to these areas or whatever. But hopefully California, New York, Florida, take you know, all these other states will follow suit very quickly because it's just the right thing to do mm-hmm. um, to protect these kids. Like, obviously, you can't control what a parent does and how a parent has their kid involved in the internet, but you can make sure that they are making money off of their kid, that the kid is making money as well. Like, that's something that they can't control. So, yeah. They're crazy. Yeah. I, I, I'm still team no kids in content. I it just gets that. messy. I agree with that as well. <laughs> it's just I messy. agree with that as well. Yeah, because it's just, it's just not, it's just not right. They can't, they can't mm-hmm. consent, like you said. And sharing a picture of your kid on Instagram every now and then is different than like building a whole YouTube family blog channel around your kids. You know, yeah. yeah. So. It's important and how they feel about that matters and they might not want their whole childhood to be on the internet for anybody and their mom to be able to see, you know, every breakdown that they had when they started their period. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah, just, just not for everybody yeah. to know and see. Yeah. And I feel like when a lot of this stuff like 
when they get into it and start making money, they're trying to be mm-hmm. a little bit more salacious and salacious. So they're mm-hmm. going to get the clip of, like you say, your kid having a meltdown or mm-hmm. going through a life changing event. And it's just not fair. It's, it's mm-hmm. not fair for that to be for consumption. It's just, I know. I know. yeah, I know. I, I get it, entertainment for people, but like, mm-hmm. Mm-mm. it's weird. Watch, watch. Um, Y'all don't need to get y'all's entertainment for this. Watch House of the Villains. With us. Hey, these With are adults. Consenting adults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when they are making money, nobody is exploiting them, okay? Like, there are better ways to get your entertainment, guys. Yeah. We adults. Yeah. You can continue to listen to us. There we go. And watch us on YouTube. And you can't watch us on YouTube. Yep. Because y'all got to see me and my facial expressions. Like, the devastation on my face when I realized that washi tape was sold out. But... Yeah, I'm not over it. <laughs> no washi tape is cute. I don't blame you for not being over it. It is really, really I'm cute. not over it. Uh, but yeah, y'all. Thank y'all for listening this week. Myra, do you have anything else for the peeps? Uh, No. Yeah, thank you all for listening. You can definitely check out the episodes over on YouTube. Um, we need to push that a little bit more because um, I know I've been noticing y'all watching, but y'all ain't yeah. subscribing, and we need mm. we need the subscriber count. So go ahead mm-hmm. and subscribe and hit the notification bell over there. But um, yeah, I you know appreciate y'all. Thanks so much. Yes. New feedback on YouTube, Instagram, wherever, because we would love to hear that. Yes, we would. All right, yeah. guys. Uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Bye, guys. Hey, Grapevine. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Planners and Wine is hosted by Megan P. and Myra P. and is edited by Jonathan F. We'd like to thank our Planners and Wine patrons for their continued support and engagement. With special thanks to Daniel M. and Lisa F., moderators of our Patreon-exclusive Facebook group. For more amazing content, please visit plannersandwine.com or find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash plannersandwine. You can also find us on all social media platforms at Planners and Wine.